Hey, welcome back. My name is Chris. In this video, I'm going to show you six ways that you can add value to your wood shop using a laser engraver. All right, hey, right up front, I just want to give full disclosure. This laser was provided to me at no cost. Um, however, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, I'll give you a little bit about the pros and cons somewhere later in the video. My opinion about this is no way influenced by the company that provided this. The uh, engraver I'll be discussing today is the Ortor Laser Master 3. I think it's a new release. I don't know a ton about it and how it compares to others. They only asked me to demonstrate ways that um, I can show adding value to others wood shops and making money with the laser engraver. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I want to go through six ways that you can add value to your processes in your wood shop. I've had a laser engraver now for about five years and uh, I've done a lot of custom plaques and custom gifts using the engraver. And uh, I was really excited to have the opportunity to try this thing out because it's got a massive footprint increase over what I'm used to. Um, my old one has about an eight by 10 inch. Um, I think it's 110 by 300 millimeters uh, footprint, which is basically maxes out a little plaque like this. So really in any process, the three kind of trade-offs you're always working with as a business owner are cost, schedule, and performance. So any way you can reduce cost, increase uh, your efficiency and the use of time, or add a unique capability or a different um, level performance, you can add value to your process. So the cool thing about a CNC controlled machine is it can generally do all three of those things for you in one way or another. If you wanna hear about the specifics of my setup, I'll put those a little bit later in the video for those that are interested. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna jump right into um, item number one is highly custom projects. Whether it's a custom plaque, a uh, unique add onto a gift or a project that somebody wants you to, or even a highly custom gift like this, literally the sky's the limit as far as customization. So I'll give you an example. This is a project I'm making for my kids. Um, it's a gift from them to some friends that are moving out of the neighborhood. Um, they've been really close friends with them for the past two years and really just want to give them something to remember each other by. So that we took a picture of the kids and you know added a little bit of text and things and each one of them is going to get one of these to uh, you know allow them to remember their friends and for their friends to just have something to remember our, our kids by. So a highly custom gift like that where you can actually engrave a photo onto wood is one way that you could literally apply that to any project, whether it's somebody's name to a custom gift or you know a graduation gift or, uh, I mean, literally the sky's the limit there. Another uh, way is by branding your content. See, here you can see I've actually engraved my QR code, my logo, and some other things onto a piece of wood. You could put this on the back of a project. Um, I put it on the back of my plaques and that can allow you to get sales leads. When somebody's you know, bragging about the plaque that they gave somebody, you turn it right over, there's your logo, there's a QR code to make contact with you. Right there, you've got a sales lead that can add value to your business and bring you a future customer. And it just makes it that much faster and having something like a QR code right on your uh, product um, allows somebody to find you without any effort at all. And of course, you want to make it as easy to, for people to do business with, with you as possible. Value add number three, plaques. Um, if you have never done engraving work before, um, plaques are a pretty lucrative market. Whether you're talking to baseball teams, you know, annual gift to the players, or, you know, in my case, a military organization, there's people always coming and going and you're recognizing excellence. Plaques are a great way to do that. I always keep an Etsy listing open uh, on my site for custom plaques. People find me that way. People find me by way of word of mouth. And um, having an engraver allows you to do custom plaques. They're super easy to do. What I do is I actually cut my blanks and pre-finish them and then come back and engrave and then seal that engraving. I find that that gets me the best, um, the best look. Uh, Pre-finishing is a little bit of risk because if you screw it up, you're screwing up almost a final project. project. Um, another way to do that is to kind of partially pre-finish. Apply your stain if you're going to use it. Apply a basic coat of your clear. Or um, what I'll do is I'll 
I'll typically use lacquer when I do plaques. Sometimes I'll use polyurethane, but whatever that sealing coat I, I want, I'll sand the main engraving surface to a final finish, and then I'll come back and stain and seal, and then I'll engrave on top of that. And then I do profile and perimeter work. That way, if I don't get the engraving exactly centered or where I want it, I can make that adjustment when I'm cutting things. So it's just a little bit of a change in pro process for me. But the cool thing about plaques is you can really batch them out. And if you have a good margin on them, you can make a lot of money through plaques. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of the plaque shops, all they do is buy pre-finished plaques off the internet and engrave them. So that's a technique too if you don't want to put the work into customizing or offering custom plaques. It can also uh, help you with consistency because those are produced in a factory somewhere. They're all you know batch consistent and um, so it can save you a lot of time and all you're doing in that case is just adding the engraving and doing a final finish. Item number four is precision cutting or I guess you could just call this thing a laser powered um, scroll saw. But this is out of quarter inch plywood and it had no problem cutting through it. I did do multiple passes to kind of minimize the actual burn on the perimeter of it. But literally, just like any other CNC, this thing is way more accurate than you could ever be by hand. Um, so whether you're talking wooden gears, um, there's patterns and plans and G-code files for wooden puzzles. Uh, my kids and I have had a lot of fun putting together 3D puzzles um, that are generally out of stamped balsa wood or, or basswood, um, but you can make those yourself um, out of any plywood. There's marble run kits. There's all kinds of really cool gift ideas that if you have a laser, you can cut them yourself. Um, another example is with prototyping. Um, the workbench that this is sitting on was cut by a CNC router, and this is a laser cut prototype um, that's at 25% scale of the final workbench. So prototyping and cutting parts on a laser is another way that you can either prototype and, and see mistakes or, or see trade-offs up front, or you can use this thing to cut while you're doing something else in the shop. So I just jumbled that right there. So that was four and five. So precision cutting and five is prototyping. Now six, we've kind of talked about throughout this, but it's allowing you to double your efforts. So this is an automated machine. Once you get the design work and push send on the G-code, this thing's off and running. It's engraving a plaque. It's making these coasters. It's doing whatever process that you set it to do. And now you are freed up to go do whatever else you could be doing with your time in the shop. So it might be engraving a plaque while you're making plaque blanks. And you might be in the finishing room applying finish to some finished plaques or you can be doing customer service thing, taking orders. Um, really, this thing just frees you up kind of like an employee to go do other things that you might need to do for your business. So I hope you like that. That's the six ways that I've found that you can add value very quickly to your wood shop with a laser engraver. Next, I want to run you through four pros of this specific engraver, and then I'll run you through a few cons. So pro number one is the quality of engraving. Um, over my old engraver, which not only took longer, this quality of engraving, the just the, um, the precision, the ability to engrave faster allows me to do more cuts per millimeter, which allows me to do better quality engraving faster. So the quality of engraving is a huge improvement for me in my process. Um, between this machine and my old machine. A plaque like this on my old engraver would be hours of burn time. On this, I can literally do a test burn in probably 30 minutes or less and uh, make sure my, my stuff's good before I do a final burn. The second pro is speed. This, the speed of this engraver allows me to do so much more with it. Um, it was actually a limiting factor before. I, I didn't want to get out the engraver. I didn't want to power it up because it would take me forever to get the settings right, and then the burn would take hours, and I'd, I'd feel like I'd have to monitor that, you know, make sure it's not gonna burn down my house. So it wasn't something I could do at night, it wasn't really something I could do while I'm out of the house without taking on some risk there with uh, something going wrong and, and, you know, burning down my garage. So the speed allows me not only to use it more often, but get more use out of the engraver. And then assembly time. So I don't know if you can tell from here, but there are basically four major components to this. 
the two ends and the two rails. And I can't remember, I guess five major components. I don't think that this carriage was installed. So it's really the two ends, the two side rails, and then this carriage. And so assembly was a breeze for this thing. It took less than an hour to get it all together. And that's, you know, being careful when learning about the machine and everything. But uh, I was literally up and running um, out of the box and, and running very quickly. So major pro there, um, having the ability to get this thing off the shelf and, and ready to go. Now, going into cons, um, although this thing's a lot faster, I guess it produces smoke faster than the other one too. So it's not something I can really do indoors unventilated. I have to keep uh, my garage door up when I'm running this thing. And uh, my garage kind of smells like smoke now because of uh, cutting and, and engraving with this thing. So ideally this would be in some kind of an enclosure with a vent directly to the exterior. I know some of the more professional cabinets come with that, um, but it's definitely something to consider. Um, and then it's really something you can do outdoors, but you know, it is a piece of electronic equipment. So, you know, take on your risk there. However, you know, you can put it out on a sunny day and uh, do that outside. Ironically enough, the large footprint's actually a con in my shop. It's a piece of somewhat precision equipment. It's all extruded aluminum. You know, it can dent, it can break. I have a limited amount of space um, in my wood shop. So now I've got this thing that's assembled and I want to take care of it and I don't really have a great spot to put it. So I do plan on making, actually expanding the top of my current cart for my small CNC engraver. And I'm gonna build a little bit of an enclosure to just kind of not only uh, protect eyeballs from the laser, but um, also vent the smoke. And it'll just make it a little bit easier to have it stored along the wall. And I can pull it out from the wall whenever I need to use it. It'll be on a cart. It's a trade off, of course. Now I can engrave a lot larger things or multiple plaques at one time um, for a small shop. Um, Acon is the learning curve. So laser GRBL does an okay job at capturing settings, but uh, as you can see on here, I was setting up a plaque and I did you know multiple, multiple test burns. There's four just on this one plaque before I did a final burn. And each one of those test burns, I'm playing with settings, tweaking them. And anyhow, you, you really have to take good notes. And there's a lot of, lot of nuance and changes in quality just by playing with the settings. It's like any other electronic CNC device. Um, getting those settings right is a major learning curve. There's a lot of information out there online um, on how to tune these things up, but uh, I've just found that in my own shop, I've got to take really good notes so that I can duplicate and, uh, and I'll have to relearn those. And then I did have a firmware issue with this thing. Um, I've done a full firmware reset on it, um, but I've had a little bit of, uh, of an issue with it. I'll put it on me because it's likely a settings thing. Every time I've had the issue, it's I'll hit send on the, uh, the file to start an engraving and it'll kind of freeze up and then just go into an alert. But it's something to do with laser GRBL and the settings it's outputting to the laser. When I reset those settings in laser GRBL and resend, I've, I've gotten good burns right after that. So I've got a little bit of a, of a software issue that I'm working through, but I've only had this thing for two weeks. And so that's completely on me, just learning the machine, learning how my software interfaces with the firmware. And um, I don't put that as a negative necessarily out of the box because uh, I've watched a lot of reviews. Most people are using Lightburn with this, not laser GRBL. And I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using a little bit um, lower grade software to drive this thing. So it's probably just on me and, and my lack of understanding of this machine. So not a con, but I, I do want to make you aware of it. Vibrations is another con. So you can see I've got some ghosting on this image where the entire machine was actually shaking itself. So it's got some rubber feet under it. And uh, also making sure it's on a good level surface. And I've got a sacrificial piece of MDF underneath it just for when I'm burning through things. Uh, it gives the laser something to go into. So next we're gonna talk a little bit about this setup and how I'm running this. Um, I am by no means the most experienced person at all at running one of these. So what I do works for me. It was quick to get up and running and uh, it's, it's worked for me for quite a few different things. And uh, there's tons and tons of information on these things on the internet. I am using this OTOR Laser Master 3 engraver. It's got a 20 by 20 engraving area. I think they claim that it's got a 20,000 millimeter per minute engraving speed. I don't know if that's an actual, a real engraving speed or not, but what I can tell you is it is not an exaggeration, exponentially faster than my old engraver. A, uh, a small plaque that was less than eight by 10 would be like an eight hour burn on my old engraver. It's probably 25 minutes on this thing. So it's definitely a time saver compared to my old engraver. 
And I think a lot of that has to do with it being a belt-driven machine. And um, obviously, uh, the tech's come a long way in five years even. So that's that setup. Now, I am software-wise, I'm running a program called Laser GRBL. And it's uh, it's completely open source. And I found that it meets all of my needs. Now, Lightburn is a little bit better of a program. I think you can do both cutting and engraving in the same files. Um, I haven't found a way to do that in Laser GRBL yet, which what I'm saying there is if you engrave a surface, you can't necessarily do a vector perimeter cut in the same file. I'm not sure uh, if that's a capability or not, but I've never used it. And now that this, uh, this engraver has a little bit more of a powerful um, laser, I've actually been cutting some materials with it, which is something I've never done in the past. As far as all of my editing and preps of my files, I do all of that work in Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, and I just export it as a PNG image. Laser GRBL works really well with PNGs and it turns those into uh, vector files that you can interpret into um, power settings for the laser and XY locations uh, to turn into a vector for G-code. Let me know what questions you have. If you've got ways to add value using an engraver or ways that you've found um, that a laser engraver adds value, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. But uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, it's okay. Give it a thumbs down. But please, just tell me why. Give me feedback in the comments. I always want to improve my videos. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new here, I'm going to throw a subscribe button right above me. Feel free to click it if this is something you're interested in. I'll have lots more videos like it. I'm going to put a couple videos over here to my right that I think you'll enjoy. Feel free to check them out. If you found some value in this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps this video do a little bit better. So do your comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video or your tips that go along with it. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.